people are furious about LeBron James comments on China and Hong Kong. And, and that was including me. When I first started learning about this Hong Kong controversy regarding LeBron James, I was confused. I just didn't understand LeBron and I was a, a part of the hate train. But after me doing around like 10 to 15 hours of research and then presenting this research to random people online in YouTube comments, forums, chat groups, I realized that a lot of people just don't really know the facts. And once you start learning the facts about this, you realize that LeBron James comments were actually in the right and we should start actually be directing our hate towards this guy named Daryl Morey, which is the Houston Rockets GM. So to understand this whole China controversy, you really have to look at this one tweet that was made on October 4th by Daryl Morey, Houston Rockets GM, which of course is an NBA basketball team. Now this tweet by NBA's Houston Rockets GM, which is their president, the person who makes the picks, makes the decisions in the back office, Daryl Morey tweeted, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. And to understand what makes this tweet so bad that he did and so insensitive to the situation, we really have to understand the history of China, Hong Kong, and just the relationship between the two. first thing that you got to understand is that Hong Kong is a region within China. In the 1840s, Britain came and colonized Hong Kong, making it officially owned by Britain. This is the reason why Hong Kong has very different economic systems and political ideals than China. China is more of an authoritarian government, which means that basically the state rules everything. The state places people within high levels of businesses. They really control a lot of parts within the market is controlled through the state and through the country and the government where Hong Kong is just more of the traditional democracy that we're used to. Not exactly the same as America's, but their democracy. They have a bunch of positions in government that are voted by on by the people and the people appoint them and then they do the governance on behalf of the people. So in the 1990s, the lease that Britain had over Hong Kong expired and Hong Kong officially gave over Hong Kong back to China under some special agreements and conditions. Hong Kong became a special administrative region within China. This essentially meant that Hong Kong got to have a separate governing system, separate economic system, all different from mainland China. And basically this was under the principle that they called one country, two systems. So although Hong Kong was officially part of China, it got to run under a whole different economic system than China did. Now, the thing to note about this is that Hong Kong and China's special arrangement will end. So in the year 2047, China will fully own Hong Kong and basically Hong Kong will at that time have to abide by China's rules. Unless, of course, the government in Hong Kong and the government in China can come to some sort of agreement that allows Hong Kong to still remain pretty much autonomous from China and its overall government influences. So with that little history lesson when it comes to Hong Kong and China, now we can come back to how ridiculously underinformed this tweet was. So again, the tweet by Daryl Morey reads, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. And the reason why it's saying stand for freedom is right now there is Hong Kong protests that are going on where people are getting injured. Some people apparently have even died. And overall, it kind of looks like a human rights crisis is going on there. However, there is a huge misconception that is going on when Daryl Morey puts a tweet like this on his Twitter. This whole notion of fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong makes sense until you realize that Hong Kong civilians are protesting their own Hong Kong government. Now this narrative is a huge contrast to the overall general misinformation that it's Hong Kong versus China. That's technically not true and it's really fanning the flames of this anti-China, opposition, evil China conspiracy media narrative that's really starting to take place. So you may be asking yourself the question, what is this bill in Hong Kong and why are Hong Kongers, why are they protesting it so much and risking their safety to protest it? So essentially what this bill does is it is an extradition agreement between China and Hong Kong. That means if there's someone in Hong Kong that is wanted in China, Hong Kong will have to basically send that person to China or China forces that can come in and arrest that person. 
Now, Hong Kongers are very against this, and rightfully so, because China's judicial system works very different from Hong Kong's judicial system. You know, in democracy, there are systems and checks in place to make sure you kind of get the right guy and hopefully you get him. Whereas in China, if it's more one person's opinion that you did something wrong, then those systems and checks in place aren't necessarily there and you could just end up in jail without the right judicial process to really plead your point. Now the people that are in within Hong Kong's government that are pushing this bill through, these are known as basically pro-China or pro-Beijing legislators, where the people in government who are opposing this bill, they're known as pro Hong Kong legislators. Now, the way that it works in Hong Kong is that basically the pro China legislators, they always outnumber the pro Hong Kong legislators. And this is because of the fact that China and Hong Kong do a lot of business together. So a lot of the Hong Kong legislators uh, around like, I think it's like 30% of them, they represent the business interests within Hong Kong. Now, first, you might be thinking, oh, my God, these pro, you know, these pro Hong Kong people are selling out their people. But you have to really look at the big picture here. Hong Kong imports 40 percent of its stuff from China, 40 percent of its imports from China. That is a massive deal. If these two regions get into some sort of trading war similar to the United States and China and China implements like a 20 percent or 30 percent tariff, that would literally crush so many industries within Hong Kong and cause inflation to spike within the Hong Kong dollar and within the Hong Kong region. So with this, all this backstory, it's very necessary to at least understand the basics of what's going on in Hong Kong to China to really have a somewhat nuanced position on this LeBron James controversy. So let's get into it. Why are people so mad at LeBron James? So after Daryl Morey's the Houston GM's tweet, then Bay was in full out panic control. Like you have to remember, to China represents 20% of the NBA's revenue and China was canceling business deals. They're pulling Houston Rockets apparel out of stores. They were basically canceling games that were going on. They were canceling live feeds of those games going on. And they were so angry. They're basically at this point threatening to never deal with the NBA again and have the NBA banned in China completely. And if you think this is a stretch that the NBA will be banned in China, the NBA made around $8 billion in revenue in the year 2018. In that same year, YouTube's estimated to make around $10 billion in revenue. It's banned in China currently. And Facebook is estimated to make almost $50 billion in revenue. And yes, Facebook too is also banned in China. So it is not so far out of the box to say that the China is ready and willing to ban NBA completely out of the market. So because Daryl Morey's tweet made it seem like he was supporting Hong Kong versus China when it's Hong Kong mainly protesting against its own government, this tweet now allowed people to make lots of anti-China propaganda or anti-China news and facts and put it in the mainstream news. This at the same time where Donald Trump has a complete trade war going on with China. China at this point is just ready to get rid of the NBA problem and cut that completely. So of course, a week after Daryl Morey's tweet, someone has to take the blame. And being the face of NBA, LeBron James basically put his brand on the line and made a comment letting China basically know that the NBA is truly disgusted with this action. So I'm going to read the quote that LeBron James said in an interview a week after Daryl Morey's tweet about the whole situation. LeBron James says, I don't want to get into a verbal feud with Daryl Morey, but I believe he wasn't educated on the situation at hand and he spoke, said James. And so many people could have been harmed, not only financially, physically, emotionally and spiritually. So just be careful what we tweet and say. And yes, we do have freedom of speech, but there can be a lot of negative that comes with that too. Now, now LeBron James is getting absolutely torn apart for these comments. And in this video, I really want to go over why the controversy is just makes no absolute sense. 
and I'm gonna go over the rebuttals. The first thing is that people are trying to make this seem like this is only a money thing for LeBron. They're saying LeBron is mad because he lost a bunch of money and that he's putting money over people's right to protest over Daryl Morley's, Morey's right to protest and the human rights violations that are going on in Hong Kong right now. However, the people who want to attack LeBron James on this, you notice how they conveniently just make it focused on money and don't focus on, on any of the other stuff he said, like being harmed physically, emotionally, and spiritually. China's laws and rules are a lot different because they're an authoritarian government than the United States or Western nations. So Daryl Morey putting out this tweet that would anger Chinese residences literally while the NBA players are in China. That's when the GM put out this tweet when the NBA players are in China literally puts LeBron James at risk. All it takes is one person with a baseball bat or a group of people who are paid to do something to LeBron James or any of the NBA players or any of the NBA staff that has to be there and stay there even after the NBA players leave. It only takes one incident to happen and that physical incident would have been on Daryl Morey. Now the big reason why people are getting not taking the physical aspect of this is very simple. Let's say that instead of a group of NBA basketball players, it was a group of 14 year old girls who play Olympic basketball and on their way to China, when they're in the middle of China, in the middle of a China US trade war, their organizer of that team put out a tweet that said basically free Hong Kong or freedom for Hong Kong. Just imagine the anxiety that these girls would be going through as their games are being canceled, as there are angry Chinese protesters against them, as they're scared to eat food there, as maybe even hotel reservations are getting cut off. Think of the overall fear of their safety that they would have. And think about how the families of these 14 year old girls think about how they would be fearing for their loved ones not being able to come back across the border. This international stuff happens way more than you really think about it. A great, a very recent incident that happened is of course ASAP Rocky in Switzerland. He was jailed for over 20 days for something that would never get him jailed in the United States. But think about how scared those 14 year old girls must have been. If that would have happened, we would have been on Daryl Morley's booty cheeks for making a tweet like that that put 14 year old girls in the face of danger. There'd be riots and people telling people to cancel Daryl Morley. And the worst part about it is Daryl Morey has the right to protest, but his protest put the lives of other people in danger who never had the choice if they wanted to protest with Hong Kong citizens. They never had the choice to put themselves in danger. They never had the choice to have their business meetings canceled. They never had the choice to be scared and not know if they're going to be detained or be locked away for something. Daryl Morey's tweet was incredibly selfish and put a lot of people in danger. And if we just replace those 14 year old girls with NBA black basketball players, and if we just look at them through the human lens that yes, black people can get hurt too, yes, black people do experience anxiety too, then it would be so clear to see how wrong Daryl Morey is for putting human lives in danger. And the biggest criticism that LeBron James really had against Daryl was the fact that the tweet could have waited a week. By Houston's president tweeting this as soon as the NBA players have reached into China, this looks like a big political stunt by the NBA players to protest against China. He's using his platform as an NBA GM to make a political statement about something he's just not completely informed about. It just doesn't make any sense and he put people in danger and people in harm. And not to mention, when people leave, when the NBA comes back, the NBA does have staff in China that still have to deal with all the criticism and the shitstorm that Daryl Morey created. So while he's doing the easy thing of just making a tweet and doing the lazy thing and sitting on his chair and making a tweet, there's people who have to deal with the real ramifications of maybe now the government starts messing with their family. Maybe it starts messing with their family's employment for the people who are representing the NBA in China. This is disgusting and it's a very selfish act by Daryl Morey to not think of the ramifications this would have to all the other people. And the reason I started really bringing in the whole race thing about this between, you know, 14 year old white girls between, you know, the difference between 14 year old white girls and old black men is because of reason number two of how people are comparing this LeBron James incident 
and the hypocrisy of LeBron James, saying how he could stand with Colin Kaepernick with Black Lives Matter, how they're protesting police brutality, but he could not stand with the Hong Kongers, Hong Kongers protesting against China. Again, they're protesting against their own government, but for the narrative, people are saying that they're protesting against China. He's not standing with them, so he's a hypocrite and he's just shut up about politics forever. What really angers me so much about this is that we're now asking and expecting an NBA athlete to have international geopolitical opinions and make geopolitical impacts on something that nobody's really informed about. And we're now all of a sudden we're pro America getting in other people's elections and other people's political decisions and other people's democracies. Well, OK, if now all of a sudden we want America to interfere with another country or region's democracy, because remember, this Hong Kong protest is about a bill that's being passed in their government. If we want our NBA players to start getting involved in protesting bills within democracy or within democracy regions or countries, then why is everyone screwing impeach Trump over possible Russian ties and possible Russian meddling in our elections? So you're saying that all countries should keep out of our elections and our political processes, but the United States has a duty. They are demanded. It is expected of LeBron James to go to another country and tell them how they should run their government. Do you see the overall crazy hypocrisy of this whole thing? It makes no sense. I have seen some people go as far to say that LeBron James is racist and he only cares about black people because he steps up for black people and he's not doing it for people in Hong Kong. But could you imagine at the middle of like the Black Lives Matter protests at the height of everything that was going on, if Russia, China or North Korea came down and they were like protesting all lives matter without any context of the situation at all? It would seem so ridiculous and so much people would mad, even if they cheered, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, it would get so many people triggered. And this isn't the way that international geopolitical politics should just it's, it's not the way it should go down not all it re, it's really not third unfair criticism of lebron james is i've been seeing this this quote being used against him for some reason it's the martin luther king quote that's like injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere and people are trying to use this against lebron james saying that look man you can never talk about social justice again we don't care about those broke you know black people in akron ohio that you're trying to help out we don't care about anything never talk about politics again when again these people who you know are coming and criticizing lebron are just so uninformed about this whole hong kong thing to realize why using this quote against LeBron James makes no sense, you have to understand nuance. The reason why this extradition bill is happening in the first place and it's being pushed through the Hong Kong legislation is because there was literally a dude in Hong Kong that took his girlfriend to Taiwan, killed her in Taiwan, came back to Hong Kong, and he cannot be extradited or convicted of a crime. Why? because there is no extradition agreement between Hong Kong and Taiwan. So they drafted a bill to make an extradition agreement so this guy couldn't just be in Hong Kong chilling while he's literally a murderer that, murderer that everyone knows is a murderer. This bill, this extradition bill that's going through and being passed through Hong Kong's government, it would also allow China to have an extradition agreement, which of course China is a different type of government, so they might abuse that extradition agreement. And this is where the complex and the nuance comes in. So while, while these people are sitting on their moral high horses and criticizing LeBron James for going off and not sticking up for injustices anywhere, there just stinks of such hypocrisy because what about the justice for this guy's girlfriend? What about the justice for this girlfriend's family, her kids, her, her cousins, everyone who knows her, her friends? What about the justice for her? If LeBron James was to stand with the Hong Kongers, this girl would again get no justice. So that's why this, this whole controversy just Dinks of hypocrisy and people are just jumping on the LeBron James bandwagon just because they want to hate him. That's really what it is. They just want to hate him and they don't want to do the research. The fourth, un the fourth unfair criticism of LeBron James has to be that how could he side with the evil Chinese government? 
And the problem with this again is like, you just have to literally do your research and really ask yourself, you know, what does it mean to be evil? You know, this brings me back to that Bible verse. I think it goes something like, you know, Jesus said, thee who is without sin, cast the first stone. Because when it comes to looking at China's evil, it's really all about perspective. In the 1970s, nine out of 10 Chinese people were living under $2 a day. $2 a day, that is ridiculous. You can't even buy like a McDouble or a Big Mac with that amount of money. And you're living off of $2 a day? And between 30 to 40 years later, China is literally a powerhouse nation. They have the highest purchasing power out of any place in the world. And their economy is only second really to America's when it comes to the value of their dollar. Now, China's improvement in their economy has literally saved millions of people's lives. They lifted around two thirds of the world's population out of poverty. And many people who would have died from just starving to death or childbirth or disease, those lives have literally been saved because of China's government's political philosophy. So when you're saying that China's evil and you know, you're naming all these atrocities that happen in China, you're really not really weighing for all the different lives that China has saved through their economic policies. And then people want to, you know, reference, you know, they're jailing Muslims and apparently there's organ harvesting and, you know, all these people have died mysteriously without the proper judicial processes going through. And yes, these are things that might be the direct result of the type of government that they're running, this authoritarian government. However, whenever you criticize China about, you know, their jailing and what's happening in jails, always remember the US has the same amount of people per capita in jail as China. And in China, religion is just not allowed. It's, it's, it's just not, it's just not part of their thing. And it is so easy as us as Western countries or Western societies to take our ideals and say, yo, if your ideals aren't the exact same, then you guys are evil. But please remember, China was basically in civil wars from like 1910s all the way up to basically the 1950s and people were dying. There's a bunch of dynasties and then their communist party took power, their one party government, and they basically unified China and basically slowly gave control and rule to China, which is why we can see the globalization and these multinational companies can come in now safely and actually do business in China. It's because this one party government put some rule, put some order in there, and now they can actually at a place where economic trades and progress and deals can actually happen. And people are talking about, you know, the things that are happening with the Muslims in China. And yes, these stuff are very bad. They're, they're very bad. But again, again, this is a country that's trying to repair, trying to fix itself, just like big countries such as America. We all know America has had a history of slavery and they have jailed the most people in their jails out of any country. And guess what? Most of those people are black. Which means that not only does America have a history of, you know, doing bad things to black people, but they're still doing it to this day, which is the reason why Black Lives Matter and other protests are happening, because black people are still getting persecuted as a minority class in the States. And it's kind of hypocritical for an American or a Westerner to point a figure at China and say, yo, you are you are treating your Muslims very badly. You need to stop it. You're an evil regime when literally the United States had Guantanamo Bay running wild after 9-11. That is why other nations, other countries and even other continents are looking at China and saying, hey, man, this might actually be the way to, you know, there's there's something to this government. There's something to the government style. Maybe this is the way to actually advance our nation. That's why China is right now is investing big amounts of money into the continent of Africa and African countries. And we're seeing that Africa is having rapid growth from the Chinese investment. One of the funny stories that you can really look at is Akon's $1 billion like credit loan that he got from China to basically put like fresh power everywhere or solar power or um, electric power. I can't think of the word, basically good energy everywhere. He, he basically took a billion dollar credit line loan from like China, which is just crazy how much money they're willing to invest into Africa. And then people want to put on LeBron James. Oh, you know, the people there are working in sweatshops. You know, your your shoes are made by people who are working in these sweatshops. 
first of all, we all wear Nike, so we're all guilty. Second of all, we all use iPhones, so we're all guilty of, you know, using child labor to make our phones. So please don't cast rocks in a glass house. And the other thing is this whole sweatshop thing is overblown. Yes, their standards are not as good as ours. Yes, their working environments aren't as good as ours, but understand that multinational companies can be a good thing and are becoming a better thing for these nations. Remember how Chinese people were living off of $2 a day? Well, remember that the reason, one of the big reasons why this is increasing is because multinational companies, yes, like Nike, are giving people the option to work in factories and make higher wages than they normally would. Now, again, these human, their the conditions of working aren't up to ours, but over time, when more nations can have more bargaining power and the workers can start bargaining better working experiences and more pay, their working conditions and their pay will go up to eventually match the states over time. Just not now, which is why we need to start talking about them, create awareness, but over time this will converge to ours. And the last reason, oh God, people love to slam LeBron James about this is they're saying he's doing it for the money. And to all these people criticizing LeBron James for caring about money, oh my God, this, this just, it honestly hurts my head to talk about this. This, this is the same LeBron James that is planning to get around a hundred million dollars to put kids in America through his I Promise school. A hundred million dollars just throws through one ear and comes out the other. But understand, it takes around 50 full-time workers their whole lifetimes to make a hundred million dollars. And LeBron James, in the one lifetime that he has, has planned to get that money and commit it to building his I Promise schools to help at-risk youth and stop the cycle that he had to experience when he was a kid. If you're talking about a guy who's selfless with his money, please name me some billionaires who have done something that revolutionary, that selfless with all their money he has. He's literally giving his money directly back to his community and all of a sudden this guy is the guy who only cares about paychecks? And another thing, the NBA is only worth $8 billion, that is chump change to China. They could easily pull all their money out and that's around 20% of the NBA's revenue. To all those people criticizing LeBron James for that, let right now, please, please, if you're criticizing LeBron James, take 20% of your paycheck and donate it to the free Hong Kong cause. Please just do that now. Just take 20% of your paycheck, donate it to the free Hong Kong cause. If you want a business, fire 20% of your employees right now and donate their salaries to the free Hong Kong cause. If you have a family, don't talk to 20% of them until they get a plane and fly to the free Hong Kong cause in Hong Kong. And if you have a smartphone, delete 20% of your apps and replace it with all news organizations that are only covering the freedom for Hong Kong citizens. 20% is a lot and lebron james isn't somebody who needs a lot of money he literally stepped on the nail died on the cross for like half of the nba players in the league who actually would benefit more from this than lebron james would and he's taken the blunt of the heat of heat from this because he is the face of the nba and he has to be the one to say that daryl morey messed up so instead of criticizing lebron james we should instead ask him lebron james if we really care about hong kong lebron james has been one of the biggest social activists the biggest social voices essentially even you some could even say after his prom school like the modern day martin luther king for a lot of social protests we should ask him how do we go about and help hong kong what can you do what kind of organizations can you start what kind of conversations can you start but instead of doing that my man, Daryl Morey, jumped the gun, basically put the NBA in the middle of a shitstorm, in the middle of a trade war, and is causing the NBA to potentially lose over a billion dollars in revenue. If you really wanted to help the Hong Kongers out, you have to be strategical. You can't just share a tweet over Twitter and insult a nation that has over a billion people in it. 
There are smart diplomatic ways you can go about this. And if LeBron James has the ear of someone or if Adam Silver has the ear of someone in China, maybe he can inspire talks there or maybe they can inspire talks in Hong Kong to help smooth this thing over. But doing it over social media is not the way to do it for the NBA organization. All in all, when it comes to the Hong Kong protests against their own government and who is right and what side to support, me personally, I'm not educated enough to really come to decision. I don't know the complex political bill that they should pass. I don't know what they should do in 50 years when China absorbs Hong Kong. These are very complex social issues. But if you have a disagreement with me in here or there's something you want to add to the conversation, please let me know. This, this video I felt just had to get made. I had to let the whole story be heard. And I hope we here at the Uneducated Investor Podcast can all learn something from this whole situation and hopefully take some nuance when it comes to these social stories. So let me know what you think below. Of course, if you made this far, like the video. I spent so long to make it. I really thought it needed to be made. And as always, the best and most brightest investors are the uneducated ones. Why is that? That's because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. I try to make between one to two videos a week. And I mix investing with politics, investing with business, investing with pop culture. So if that is something you think you're interested to make sure you hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell. And we flight crew, we have to take off. See you, baby.